Hi guys, John here from Titan, and today I want to share with you the five common mistakes in dieting. So if you want to lose weight, this is five common mistakes that I see a lot, and I want to bring them up to you guys so you guys can either change these mistakes if you're making them, or you guys are educated and you guys can use this and implement it for yourself. So let's go through these five different things that I've outlined here for you guys. The first one is eating too many calories or eating too less of calories. So let's talk about this. When you want to lose weight, you want to go into a calorie deficit. And there's been a myth out there, calories are calories, calories in, calories out. This is untrue. The myth is this. The calories from eating a chocolate cake or the calories from eating a grilled chicken breast are different. Even if the number of calories going into the body are the same. Remember that there's good calories and bad calories. Now, eating too much of calories is obviously you're going to put too many calories in the body and that's going to store as fat, which is not the effect that you want. If you're eating too less of calories, the body can go into a catabolic effect and you can cause other issues with your health if you're eating too less of calories. So this is one mistake that I see a lot with a lot of different people out there in talking about calories and eating too many calories or too less of calories. So you gotta find your sweet spot, right? Two, not exercising or exercising too much. So people go out there and they think that they're gonna be able to get on some of these fad diets or programs out there and not have to exercise, okay? Or they think that they're going to exercise all day and all night. So let's talk about these problems on both ends. The first one, not exercising. Okay, your body needs to be active. We burn calories being active and using energy. Exercising, we know that more lean body mass that you have, the more muscle, the more fat you're going to burn. And you're going to stay leaner that way, your lean body mass, okay? So the next thing is over exercising. All right, I don't see a lot of people out there really over exercising. I think people really, uh, they hype that up as far as I'd say, like they go five times a week, I'm, I'm over exercising. Well, over exercising is, is not giving your body proper rest time to recover from the workout or the strain or stress that you put on it, possibly the day previous. So that's why a lot of people that are educated about working out know that they have to give their body parts a day rest in between working them out. The reason why, we're breaking down muscle fibers. We're breaking down the muscle because we want it to build up stronger. That's gonna happen in the recovery process. So, exercise is vital and key. Over-exercising, not good for your health and not good for the body, all right? Let's move on to three. Choosing low-fat or diet foods. So we see a lot of these low fat processed foods out there and we see these diet foods out there. Keto bar, this, that, whatever. Now people think this is a health food. This is the diet food. This is going to help me lose weight. Now, I'm not saying that some of them might not help, but I'm saying that most of them out there that I've seen, if you look on the back and the ingredients, they're compensating for taste with a lot of sugar or other ingredients. They're gonna have an opposite effect for what you're trying to accomplish with weight loss, okay? That is a big problem out there because people usually always tend to look at the front and the marketing plan and the scheme and they don't look on the ingredients of what's actually in the food. Know what you're eating. Get unprocessed food if you can. If you can get apples, right, that came off a tree, you want that instead of a processed apple sauce per se. All right, these are differences you guys gotta look for out there. The less processed, the better it is for your body. So look at that. Diet foods, don't believe all the hype. Make sure you look at the ingredients and make sure serving sizes line up to what you're going to intake, all right? Four, overestimating how many calories you burn during a day or exercising. I see some people come up with these exuberant amount of calories they burned in the 30 minute session in the gym. Guys, we have to be realistic about the calories that we are burning. Educate yourselves, know exactly how many calories. There are some good tools out there that will help you count the calories that you are burning. 
Now these could be off a little bit, okay? So just take that in consideration. And I would rather underestimate than overestimate. And we did talk about, you know, eating enough too. So make sure you're at least hitting that guideline or standard or goal that you want, right? Um, and usually it's 2,000 to 2,500 for the average person is what nutritional diet out there calls for. Now, some people are different and this is where you are going to have to cater to what your body needs, right? And if you need a nutritionist or a dietitian, you can search those out as well, all right? Educate yourself. Five, having unrealistic, right, <laughs> goals or expectations that you're gonna hit. Don't do that. Also going along with this, educating yourself. I brought that up in the last one, but I believe this is the exact same thing here. The reason is this. Don't set an unrealistic expectation. You're 100 pounds overweight, um, you've never exercised in your life, and you're giving yourself 60 days to be beach ready. You're gonna be a six pack, 10% body fat, you're gonna be able to exercise in all these programs, you know all this different equipment in the gym. That may not be true. So that's an unrealistic goal. You're setting, the, you're setting yourself up for failure, which in the end might cause you know, a, a beat in your confidence level. It might cause a little bit of depression because you didn't hit that goal. Why can't I hit this goal? Set realistic expectations. Those little goals that you hit will lead up into a long-term result. And that's what you're ultimately here for. You're here for the marathon, not the quick 10-second race, okay? So make sure that you guys are doing this. Educate yourself. And what I mean by educating yourself with realistic goals, go to a medical provider that deals with something like this or a trainer or somebody that has the background, certifications, and the knowledge that can help you set these realistic goals that you're trying to hit. If you can't afford them and you're on a budget, set yourself realistic goals that you can hit. Don't set little tiny, teeny goals. Don't say, I'm gonna do two push-ups today. I'm gonna do two push-ups the next day. All right, we know you can hit that goal. Something that's going to challenge your body, but you're not trying to strain your body or overdo it per se, right? I see some guys go in the gym and you know, instead of lifting you know, the 45 pounds they can do, they wanna lift 200 pounds, right? They wanna go straight to 200 pounds. You have to work your way up. It's all about progression. Progression is key. That's anything in life, especially getting to your weight loss goal and getting to that transformation that we want you to get to. So I hope these tips have helped you guys and will educate you guys and you guys can implement this in your daily lifestyle, workout regimens. If you have any more questions or concerns, you guys can always call or text us 727-389-3220. DM us and let us know if you have any questions or tips. I appreciate you guys. I'm John from Titan. We'll see you later. Hey guys, my name is Jen McHenry and I'm here to talk to you about um, one of my favorite peptides through Titan Medical Center called MK677. Um, I took it for about four months during my off season, um, which was a couple months ago because I'm back on prep. Um, but I wanted to just tell you a couple of things about it that really, that really I loved. Um, for one, I noticed a lot of strength gains. I PR'd on a couple of lifts that I do. I went heavier than I ever went ever in my life and MK677 was the only thing that I was taking. Um, so I'm definitely convinced that that is what helps me with my strength gains. Um, I've built muscle gains, clearly, um, which is always a goal because I'm a competitor. Um, but also besides the gym stuff, um, MK67 is good for your hair, um, your skin, and it helps you sleep. I sleep like a baby between the MK677 
and my Titan Serenity, which is another one that you guys might want to try because it helps you sleep as well. I just wanted to tell the ladies, don't be scared of MK677 just because it is something that helps you grow muscle. Um, and one of the things that I heard about MK677 was that it makes you extremely hungry. Um, I'm always hungry, but I did not notice that increasing at all, and I would not be afraid of that. And if you're trying to grow muscle, you need to eat anyways, so that's a benefit of it. Um, if you have trouble, I know a lot of women and my clients who seem to not be able to get all their food in in the day, MK677 will help you a lot with that and help you tone as you lift weights and you know try to reach your goals. If you'd like some more information about MK677 or any of the other awesome therapies from Titan Medical Center, you can go to www.titanmedicalcenter.com or call or text 727-389-3220. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about BPC-157, in particular, injecting BPC-157 and where to inject that. Now, this can differ because people's injuries are in different places and we get the question all the time from patients, where should I inject this medication? So I'm gonna go through a couple examples of where you guys can do the injections at for your medication of BPC-157, a healing peptide, along with TB-500. You can use these in conjunction and they work very good together if you guys are really looking for a super healing therapy package. But we want to go through BPC-157 and show you some of the different places where you can inject it at to hopefully help you heal your injury quicker. So the most common areas are in the shoulder, the deltoid area, um, in the knees, um, and tennis elbow, golf elbow. We really get a lot of these from patients and they want help. So. The knee is pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna do it today, but if you're sitting down, you pull some subcutaneous skin and you can inject it right in the area. Now I'm gonna go through the other ones with you, deltoid uh, for golf elbow, for tennis elbow, because these are more in depth. Um, not so much the deltoids, but for golf elbow and tennis elbow. So when we go through these, the first thing we're gonna do is, and let's start with the deltoid, we're gonna clean the area. So this is my deltoid or my shoulder area. I'm gonna make sure nothing's touching it. We're gonna start with a little circle and then we're gonna make that circle wider, pushing that dirt out, okay? Okay, once we do that, we're gonna let air for a second, make sure we don't push any alcohol inside. We're gonna grab our needle, okay? You're gonna do, do, cap the needle and then we're gonna go subcutaneously at a 45 degree angle not intermuscular at a 90 degree angle, but 45 degree angle. And it's closest to wherever the pain's at. So if the pain's on the inner front or the side, you're gonna go right in like so. You're gonna inject right in, you're gonna pull right out. It's that simple and that easy. Done with it. So if delts are your problem or your shoulder issues, you can inject closest to the area in the shoulder subcutaneously and get it right in there and you should be good to go. Now subcutaneous is at a 45 degree angle, like I said. So the next area, and these are the most common ones that you know we get the questions about because people understand pretty easy, deltoid, knee, and they, they inject closest to that area. But like, John, where do I do this for like golf elbow and tennis elbow? So let's talk about it. So tennis elbow is usually in the forearm area right here. That's why people, when they have grip problems, it, it hurts them, loss of strength, uh, hurts on, on pull downs, um, you know, they really feel it. And usually it's a grip area and it comes up right through into the forearm area. So wherever the pain's at, and usually the pain is right here, okay, you're gonna grab your needle, decap it. We're gonna make sure the area is clean. And then we're gonna go in at a 45 degree angle subcutaneously, not a 90 degree angle, a 45 degree angle, subcutaneous in the skin. Now you might see a little bubble in the area, that's okay. That's the medication and subcutaneously it's gonna be absorbed into the body. So that's where you hit it for tennis elbow. 
Now golf elbow is a little bit more tricky. So let's go over and let's clean the spot first. We're gonna reach behind here and if you need to, you can use a mirror and look straight ahead, okay? We're gonna go right in here, okay? And luckily I'm a pro at this, but if you need to, use a mirror. You'll be able to see exactly where it's gonna go. You can actually have, or your partner, whoever you're with, okay? Don't make it all flexed out. Loosen the arm, look in the area of where you're gonna go, subcutaneous. Now you don't have to directly put it right on top of where the pain's at. So if you can't reach and you can't see back here, don't just be pointing the needle in there and poking it in there. Make sure you know and can see the closest to the injury of where you're gonna inject that. All right, that's key. So you're gonna to wanna to follow the instructions, the directions on your vial, um, or you can call or text the office to make sure you're going through the instructions um, properly so you're getting the right doses of medication and you're injecting in the right spots. Um, if you have any further questions or concerns, please call or text the line 727-389-3220. Check out our website, www.tightmedicalcenter.com. There's going to be more instruction videos coming at you guys, so stay tuned. What's up guys, John here, Sharice, and we are here with another episode of Cupid's Corner. So we want to thank you guys for joining us all the time and learning these tips and tricks that should help your relationship. Uh, it'll help you get to the next level, hopefully. It'll help hopefully ignite that spark that maybe was diminished out or wasn't as strong as it used to be before. Mm -hmm. So we have learned these different things through our relationship and 12 plus years going on. And you know, it's trials and tribulations. You gotta work through some of these things, mm -hmm. but you learn some great things along the way, especially if you stay together, right? And that's, that's the object, to have passion and be able to stay together for a long period of time and grow old together. Stick it out. That's what they say in the movies, right? We're gonna grow old with you together. I can't wait till I'm on like a little rocking chair. We're like rocking and just like, oh, this has been <laughs> such a great experience. Hopefully we'll have bionic bodies by that point, okay? <laughs> I don't wanna be sitting we'll see there. see John, right. 90 years old, hopping around the backyard. You cute. know I like the new toy, so hopefully they'll have some good technology, and I'm <laughs> sure they will. But you know, this show, we really wanna cover, you know, a couple different things. One, um, kissing or being intimate with your partner. So this is good, and this is good for your health. Um, this actually ups oxytocin in, in the brain, in the body, and it lowers cortisol. So if you don't know what these things are, oxytocin is the happy hormone. Yes. Right? And cortisol is the stress hormone. Mm -hmm. Nobody, I mean, all of you guys, I'm sure, with everything going on, at some point in the past three months, your cortisol levels have probably been elevated because Absolutely. of the stress, you know? Absolutely. From work, your kids, personal things might be going on with mm -hmm. you and stuff like that. So, you know, you want to be intimate with your partner and kiss your partner and you might not know it, but you're actually helping yourself. Mm -hmm. And it does burn a little bit of calories. It's not a lot of calories, but it is, I guess it is some, but you can't, you know, that's not giving you a permission to eat junk food and be like, oh, well, I'll just kiss a lot more. No, that's not the kiss is... The kisses turn into other things that are cardiovascular activities, oh. and then you can go eat a piece of cake. And then you can actually tell if you have the stamina <laughs> or not, I guess, and if you need to work on your endurance or not, right? And we have things that maybe can help you do that too. But, you know, it really comes down to that. So 
be intimate with your partner, kiss your partner, right? Because you'll obviously be helping yourself. So oxytocin, like I said, it's the, it's the happy hormone. It's the bonding hormone. Um, it's something that opens up trust with your partner, okay? Um, it, it, it's good for a lot of different things. It's neurotransmitter as far as that goes. And then you have cortisol. So cortisol gets a bad rap. Mm -hmm. You're gonna put some cortisol in, it's gonna go in the bloodstream. Now, at high levels of anxiety or stress, you're gonna release more cortisol into the bloodstream and that can actually be bad for your health, mm -hmm. right? Um, and this can cause anxiety. It can cause you to retain water or you know, fat deposits you know, at that point. So you wanna make sure that you're getting a good stress reliever too mm -hmm. if you're having all this stress. And a lot of people are having stress right now. So lower cortisol levels, increase oxytocin levels, and you guys should be good to go. At least in that department anyway. Right? <laughs> so that's one thing. And if we're gonna talk about hormones like oxytocin and mm -hmm. cortisol, we might as well talk about how hormones affect relationships. Because mm -hmm. it does affect relationships, okay? On many levels. And this can be emotionally, physically, mentally. Yeah. Um, when I say emotionally, I mean a lot of females out there, even guys, but a lot of females and guys could be either super moody because their hormones are off, or they could be really emotional because their hormones are off. And so you have to remember that, you know, say you guys have been intimate for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, whatever. And for some whatever reason, you guys drop off and it's like, well, what's going on? That could very well be a problem. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. Your partner might be feeling like, why is this, you know, my partner being distant from me? Might what's going on? Fault. Is it me? Mm -hmm. What are they doing? What's mm -hmm. going on? It, it wasn't like this. And all of a sudden now it's, it's, it's gotten this bad pattern here, mm -hmm. you know, and then that's not good because, you know, people like affection, right? Especially when you're in this relationship and if it's been going on for that long. Um, now, hormones affect the body in different ways, right? We know that from the brain to the cardiovascular system, your metabolism, uh, keeping lean body mass on, you know, just feeling good all overall, mm -hmm. right? But hormones can obviously damage a relationship too because if the hormones are off, people might be moody, like you said, mm -hmm. and then your partner might feel some type of way about it and right. then they might go a different route. Right. So, I mean, hormones... Or you might, even, you might not even be interested in the bedroom. Yes. That's a big one. Yes. Especially for females. I'm yeah. just speaking from a female's perspective. Yeah. But if for whatever reason, let's just say that he doesn't want to be intimate anymore. And, you know, it's just... He usually got to... One person's got to start it or another. But if they don't want to be inter like intimate with you anymore, then you kind of feel like maybe you did something wrong. And you guys haven't fought. Nothing's going on. And you're saying, well... I hope it's not someone else. Right. Now you start thinking all these crazy things, which is never a good thing when it could just very well be low testosterone for a guy. Right. I mean, uh, now our hormones can be affected with different things out there. It, it's not something you did per se. Mm -hmm. Now it can be toxins in the environment, you know, foods that we're eating from our food sources, uh, EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals mm -hmm. in the air that, that could be affecting you or putting on your body that we're absorbing mm -hmm. that could be affecting hormones. And we see this. We know that hormones are going to decline with age for males and females. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to deteriorate and die. It, it's a fact of life, you mm -hmm. know. You know, you're going to pay taxes and, and you're going to die. <laughs> two things they say that's guaranteed, right? That's what you got to look forward to. But for sure. you know, so you want to live your best life and most, you know, the quality of life. And that's where hormones can come into play too. So mm -hmm. hormones can actually help a relationship. So a lot of guys that, you know, they have low testosterone, they might be feeling depressed or, uh, you know, their libido's down or, they just don't feel like themselves, right? They're Motivation, unmotivated, right? Drive. Concentration, yep. you know, all that stuff's there and they're rare to go. So at that point, or the energy, fatigue too, that's yeah. another one. Um, so if they you know, go in and they get blood checked and they get their testosterone levels optimized or back where it needs to be, everything comes back, mm -hmm. right? So now you got one partner that is optimized and ready to go. <laughs> this happens then, often. And this does happen a lot. We've <laughs> get a lot of patients where the male comes in, right? And he gets optimized, he gets feeling back to him, his old self, and we're raring to go. And then, you know, the wife, you know, she's about the same age. And Surprise. at that point, you know, he's wanting to go all the time and have a good time. And, <laughs> you like, know, she's like, oh, my God, what's going on here? I just don't feel the same, right? And that's where they usually call up and they say, hey, listen, we want to get help just like my husband or significant other got help. Right. We want to be at that level. We want to feel good like that. We want to get back that feeling. Mm -hmm. And that's where we usually help out couples, and that usually makes a relationship better. We've changed a lot of relationships like that. Yes, yes. It's, it's helped a Very lot rewarding. of different relationships. Um, plus, it, it helps their quality of life. So mm -hmm. you're not even just helping the relationship, but their day-to-day -day life. Yep. So going to work, all that jazz. Getting up. I mean, you know. 
being interested in the things you used to do, you know, I mean, that's that's another thing that a lot of people lose sight of. Like, oh, I just don't want to do it no more. There might be a reason why, or right. you know, if you're feeling depressed. So I mean, that's that's really where it is. And you know, hormones can you know disrupt at all different ages. So people think it's got to be a specific age, mm -hmm. at 30 years old as a male, or you know, for girls it, it might be you know 36 or whatever it might be. But you know, like I said, hormones can be disrupted at all different ages. Mm -hmm. Now, especially for females. Let's talk about pregnancy in females. So we know when, you know, pregnancy happens, all different hormones are going on, mm -hmm. right? And then after birth, you know, they usually have depression, mm -hmm. right? Not all the time. Sometimes. 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 Definitely gonna feel off because your body just went through, you know, this huge change. Well, think about the hormones. Right? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of different hormones that are going on right at that point. You know, waiting until afterwards, having the baby, making sure you, if you're gonna breastfeed and stuff like that, and then mm -hmm. after you're all done with that and it's safe, or if you're using formula, whatever it is, get your hormones checked, see right. where they're at. Um, and at that point, you guys can adjust them and get back to feeling the way that you wanted to, get that baby body off, right? Because, I mean, girls want that. They're like, you know, I gained so much weight, or I only gained 10 pounds, but I want to get this baby weight off. We have a lot of females that go through that. It, it, it's, it's a fact of life. Right. right? The, you know, that's what we're here. It's, as we procreate, and that's what it's going to do. It's going to affect hormones. Not 22 having a baby anymore, you know? I was 22 when we had our son. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody always forgets that me and John do have a little baby boy. Not so little. He's going up. About to be 11. 11 next 11 week. 11 years old. 11 next week. I, my body did pretty bounce much back. bounce back to some degree. Absolutely. But when you're pregnant, you're around your 30s, and you have a baby, it might be a little bit more complicated to bounce back you might not just bounce back <laughs> i mean there's a hormone correction that went on though females have different things like pcos mm -hmm. uh, or these different things that could be affecting their hormones um, so everybody's different and that's where blood testing will really tell you what's going on inside your body and it's not a cookie cutter thing so you want to make sure that everybody's taking care of you if that's what it is uh, if you want help with your hormones you can always call or text us at Titan Medical Center, 727-389-3220. Um, check out our website, www.titanmedicalcenter.com. And always great content and things will entertain you on our Facebook, uh, Instagram page, TikTok. You know, we've, That's got, a new one. we've got Twitter. So please go there, subscribe. YouTube has all our great videos. We've been open for over eight plus years now. So it's a lot of different content, instruction videos on some of the medications, um, lifestyle videos, just us out and about, having fun at some of the Titan Medical Center events. You'll see a lot more of this around town or around the state of Florida. So get ready. Tight <laughs> medical takeovers in full effect. So we want to thank you for tuning in to thank another you Cupid's guys. Corner. Every Sunday at 11 a.m. Yep. on ABC. Tight medical health and lifestyle show. We are here for you guys. We appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.